So now I'm going to talk about how each of the introvert types become egotistic according to Carl Jung. Let me illustrate the process by which introverts first function gets egotistic and also how all types first function gets egotistic. So first of all, the introvert's egotism comes from them undervaluing themselves and their own first function because they live in an extrovert's world. And because their first function is introverted, it's underappreciated. And they actually, they themselves, they don't appreciate their own first function. But anything that gets suppressed operates unconsciously. So as a result, the first function of the introvert subconsciously rebels. And when things get suppressed, um, they don't actually go away. What they do is they actually take up an egotistic and inflated kind of energy. This is how the first function of the introvert becomes egotistical. And all types become egotistical with the first function, including extrovert types, when the first function starts to inflate with its importance and suppresses the inferior function. And when that happens, as I said, the energy does not go away. So when the first function suppresses the inferior function, the inferior function just takes up a very highly negativistic mindset that's very rigid and black and white. If you would like to address this negativistic mindset, I've created a video called Why It's Hard to Believe in Positive Thoughts and Stop Negative Ones. The video is not specifically about typology, but it can be used to integrate the inferior function and reduce its black and white and rigid nature. As this video applies to any sort of negative mindset that is created because of repressed negativistic thought. Be sure to check out my website, leonsalotherapy.com, in which I have all sorts of articles on mental health, and also my Instagram page as well, in which I have little bits of inspirational writing. I have links to both of these down below in the description box. And you could also watch my video on extroverts over here in the corner too. First, I'm going to start off with introverted thinking types. So what Carl Jung writes about is that the more the introverted thinking type obsessively becomes introverted thinking, so there's nothing wrong with pursuing your primary function is actually healthy, but when it's done to the exclusion of the other functions, what happens is that in the case of the introverted thinker, the introverted thinker starts to unconsciously develop a mask of urbanity, which contrasts against their own nature. So what happens is that the introverted thinker, the more obsessively TI they become, they actually develop a cultural snobbiness about them, and they have intolerance towards those who, didn't, who do not fit their tastes or their ideas of lifestyle. So the more the introverted thinking type becomes very stubborn and headstrong in their ideas and unamenable in a realm of logic, as Carl Jung writes, they actually become highly suggestible at an unconscious level in the feeling realm. So when the introverted thinker starts to become very resistant to external influence, they don't want any input from any of the extroverted functions, they fight these extroverted influencers and they become more isolated as a result. But the more isolated they become, they actually become more suggestible in a realm of feeling unconsciously. And how this expresses itself is that they become dependent upon the close circle. You can see that element of extra feelings start to show here. They even start to allow their close circle to exploit them too, so long as they're allowed to be left alone in the realm of ideas. The next thing that Carl Jung writes about the introverted thinking type, and this is the same with all the introverted types, is that basically the objective world starts to fade away. And in the primary function, in this case, introverted thinking starts to take up a mythological quality. And how that looks like is that the introverted thinker starts to confound their own ideas and subjective truth with their own person. So they become wholly one with introverted thinking. And then as a result, they start to become very sensitive and personal around that introverted thinking, around their own ideas. They actually become almost like a feeler. So this is when the ugly side of extroverted feelings starts to show. They start to give out venomous and personal retorts against those who are against their truth and becomes rather bitter. So you could see that the ugly side of extroverted feeling here. So now I'm going to talk about the introverted feeling type. So when the introverted feeling type gets too tied with its ego, so when the other functions get repressed and the feelings towards the primary function gets really intensified with a lot of inner feeling, 
feeling, what happens is that this becomes a personal tyranny and a debased form of extroverted thinking starts to show up. And the introvert feeler starts to turn towards arrogant ambition, vanity, and petty tyranny. So you can kind of see a mixture of introvert feeling and extroverted thinking there. There's this self-concern, but there's also a sense of like this ambition or the sense of dominance. So when thinking becomes really repressed, what happens is that Carl Jung writes that unconscious thinking starts to become projected onto others. And so the inferior feelings type starts to assume what other people are thinking about. And the inferior function tends to take up a negative form. So the inferior feeler starts to think others must be thinking about negative things. They must be scheming. And I must use my inferior extra thinking to strategically try to outsmart them. So the inferior feeler even starts to undervalue their own primary function. So even virtues must be tampered with in order to play the trump card as Carl Jung writes. So this kind of shows a bit of extra thinking here. The ends justify the means in order to counteract other people's schemes. As a result, this leads to personal exhaustion to be engaged in this all the time. The other way the introverted feeler becomes unhealthy in terms of egotism is that when introverted feeling starts to become very, very introverted and there's no expression of extroverted feeling, so Carl Jung writes that the introverted feeler shows no touch of amiability when they become egotistic because their feeling becomes very conservative. What happens is that the introvert feeler starts to be neglectful towards other or indifferent towards others' well-being. So Carl Jung writes, when the introvert feeler gets falsified by egocentric attitude, this is when they become unsympathetic, they become very self-concerned, filled with sentimental self-love and self-admiration. So as I said before, it's actually healthy for introverts to pursue their own principles. So the introvert feeler can become a voice of conscience by rejecting traditional values. But when this is taken too far, when the introvert feeler does not allow information from the external world to come in and consider whether maybe some traditional values are okay, and they just do it for the sake of rejecting traditional values for its own sake. That's actually a form of egotism. And Carl Jung writes, when that happens, an unconscious extra thinking actually intensifies, and the type starts to unconsciously become obsessed with facts and concretism. So this is when the inferior feeler starts to think that facts and figures starts to define everything. So this is how egotism develops in the introvert sensing type. So it's healthy, as I said, for the introvert to pursue their own principle, their own primary function. Introvert sensing does develop a particular kind of taste for things in the sensory realm. However, when it gets falsified by the ego and the introvert sensing type suppresses the other functions, this develops into a very, very particular kind of taste that kind of comes off as like a finicky greediness and also very, very arbitrary to other people. And then the introvert sensing type becomes very narrow and singular minded in regards to their introvert sensing. They get fixated on idea of how things are supposed to be, and they're not able to see options because they're not integrating their expert intuition. So often normal introvert sensing type has a good balance between exploration, expert intuition, and tangible implementation. And you can actually see how the introvert sensing type, they kind of build the foundation with SI, and then they kind of gently explore outside of that, and then they're able to grow their web of introvert sensing knowledge through that exploration. But when expert intuition is suppressed, introvert sensing gets really stuck in the past and has almost an arbitrary ideas of how things are supposed to be, which really could confuse other people. In this case, expert intuition loses its characteristic resourcefulness and possibility mindedness when it is repressed and it takes on this unconscious form where the introvert sensing type sees every dangerous possibility or all the things that could go wrong in a very fatalistic patterns. And they also form very obsessive ideas. And then Carl Jung writes about how their intuition no longer tries to see what the intentions of others are. They just assume the worst from others. So they can be a very poor judge of context because they kind of believe that they're just like living in a dangerous world and they just assume the worst from others. 
But Carl Jung describes the introvert sensing type when they develop an unhealthy extrovert intuition. The extrovert intuition actually becomes rather fantastical, like they're living in a fantastical world. So how I see it is that the introvert sensing type enters into an extrovert intuiting world where the world is amoral and anything goes, kind of like a Dr. Seuss kind of world. The process is basically the opposite of when expert intuiting types become unhealthy. When expert intuiting types become unhealthy, be they become rather hair splitting. When introvert sensing types become unhealthy, they actually start to live in this expert intuiting world where anything goes. However, the more the introvert sensing type takes on a more balanced compensatory expert attitude, this is less likely to happen. So finally, I'm going to talk about the introvert intuitive type and how they express the ego. So the introvert and tuning type is very good to see things with little data and are able to garner incredible insight by doing so. So Carl Jung advises them to be able to, just like other introvert types, to follow their own principles. So he has been interviewed before about this type, I believe, and he said that often their imaginations all dismissed. As a result, the introvert intuitive type would dismiss their own imagination, right? So that's when they kind of undermine their own primary function. Carl Jung also writes that it's important to balance introvert intuition with a compensatory acknowledgement of the world as is, the expert sensing. So without some level of compensation, what happens is that the introvert intuition becomes exaggerated and introvert intuition could have a false sense of significance or false sense of grand transformation when very little changes out in the outer world. And when that happens, the expert sensing within the introvert intuitive type starts to unconsciously rebel. So when expert sensing is unconscious and repressed, what happens is that there are compulsive sensations. They become very dependent on the external world. So very much in contrast with their own nature, they become very attracted to expert sensing. So they go on to binges of being attracted to danger, risk, and also being very short-sighted. And they might develop impulsive behaviors, become very crass, and they kind of fuse introvert intuition, expert sensing together to form an animalistic ideology. So kind of like how it is the opposite of what expert sensing types become. So expert sensing types, when they become unhealthy, they actually become almost super religious about their introvert intuition, such that they even ignore the external world. With the introvert intuitive type, when they repress expert sensing, the expert sensing shows up and everything starts to become all about appearance, image, strength, and beauty, but in a very crass way and kind of almost like ignoring that spiritual element of life. And what happens in the introvert intuitive type when they become unhealthy is that the introvert intuition becomes exaggerated, but so does the expert sensing. In this type in particular, this creates hypocrisy. So every single type has a hypocrisy due to their first and inferior function, but with introvert intuitive type, because they're the type that kind of calls out the system and the way people live unthinkingly. So when they do that, while at the same time be attracted to that system at an unconscious level, kind of like being very much against the system, but then depending on like wealth and powerful individuals and things of that nature, and kind of comes off as a hypocrisy in these types. And in these types, as Carl Jung writes, they develop hypochondria, kind of much like the expert intuitive type. They have overly sensitive sense organs. That's kind of like a funny thing that Carl Jung wrote. And they also develop compulsive ties to people as well as objects.